It's time for the Texas Bucket List Bite of the Week. And this week, we're on a staycation in College Station at a restaurant known for steak, wine, and whiskey. We're at the Republic Steakhouse. The continuously increasing population of Aggieland has turned a once small town situated next to the train tracks into a thriving community. And it's not only on game days. As the Brazos Valley becomes bigger and bigger, so does the desire for refined dining. And the Republic knows how to whoop it up. They definitely need to come here before an Aggie kickoff. As a foodie, I love the, the high-end food. I can go on and on about it about our food. I'm, I'm, I'm quite partial. Wade Barkman brought the big flavor to BCS back in 2007, but the path here all started in the 90s when the former Juco baseball player had to make a decision about his life. Well, you can continue to pursue that and get degrees from schools you may not want to get degrees from, or you can use your brains, give up baseball, and go play school. He attended Texas A&M and got a degree in business management and then pursued his dream of owning his own restaurant by the age of 30. Why did you have to open up your own restaurant by the time you were 30? I made the boastful claim to my parents when I was about 15 or 16 that if baseball doesn't work out, I'll open my first restaurant by the time I turn 30. First, he attended the Culinary Institute of America and his first job was in Las Vegas, but it wasn't as glamorous as he had hoped. You got three degrees and you're counting kegs in the pump room underneath Caesar's Palace and it's very humbling, and then your next job is the Cleopatra's Barge. It was my first official position. Eventually, hard work and consistency paid off, as Wade made his way through the ranks for six years in Sin City. Six years in Las Vegas is about 15 <laughs> anywhere else. <laughs> to leave Win Las Vegas to go back to College Station turns a few heads when people have no idea where that is. With six weeks to spare before his 30th birthday, the Republic opened its doors and brought a steakhouse to Bryan College Station, the likes of which had never been seen before. I spent a lot of time researching what the classic American timeless steakhouse is. And I'm talking back to the 1880s to 1920s. The quad Hollywood booths that you'll see over here, that, that doesn't exist anymore. That used to be in almost every supper club in the late 1800s to 1940s, uh, to Hollywood booths over here to create a bunch of crazy cool pockets of uh, what I've always called excuses to come into the restaurant. One of the best excuses to come in, the massive whiskey collection. There's one place I know of in Chicago, in this entire country that has a better whiskey list. With some of the finest whiskeys of the world, we decided to continue the interview by correctly sipping on a couple of cocktails. 50% mouth, 50% nose, yeah. gives you a significantly longer draw, and then go into your sip. You always hear people talk about, oh, I taste vanilla, I taste tobacco, I taste all this stuff. You taste it. Yeah, no, no question. Wade piloted a flight of fine whiskey and finished things off with a special bottle that costs more than my first car. Some Michter's celebration. The coup de gras. Hey, I'm excited about so, this. So, yeah, this one is as, <laughs> as rare as it gets. It's unbelievably hard to find it. This is bottle number 97 of 256. Wow. It's only been released twice, and 256 bottles is one barrel. So there's only been two barrels ever in the history, and that's 2013 and 2016. Wow. So when you find something that rare, you have to get it, you have to buy it, and then you see the price, and you say, Oh, wow. Do I really need that? Do I really need it? And the answer is just do it. Just make it happen. Do you even tell people what you paid for this thing? Um, or is that? It's five grand. Talk about holding your breath while it's poured. Yeah, what, what happens there? Do we lick the table now? Yeah. Maybe <laughs> touch one. Oh, I'm not going to argue with that. Drinking this draws a little attention. The crew is all going to. The entire be, bar be is looking at us. Be excited to. Uh, <laughs> Be excited to try this one as well, because I feel like uh, I feel like when uh, Kate Upton walks into a room right now. All I can say is, when you order whiskey in heaven, this is what it tastes like. So what's funny about that is, oh, is that moly. to me, it's the complexity of how it hits the palate, and the fact that it is not only still going; it's just getting started. A crazy whiskey. I had no idea whiskey could do that. Just the complexity of it, the length on the finish is ridiculous on this whiskey. Eventually we're supposed to eat. At some point, yeah. <laughs> we, need to, we need to check on In the kitchen, Wade and Gary worked up a few fine dishes, starting with a shrimp dish that has Cajun roots. Refined version of a New Orleans style barbecue shrimp, but we call it Gulf Shrimp Vermonte because in Texas, this is not barbecue. <laughs> no. In New Orleans, it is. This dish is all about the shrimp and the sauce. We instruct our servers to make sure that they don't clear this before all the sauce is gone. <laughs> Next up, a steak au pois. 
It's a classic way of eating a steak. It's also a, a way that not a lot of people are eating steaks these days, and we, like a lot of things, try to bring back some of the classic old school ways of preparing and eating steaks and crazy cocktails, and I'm a bit of an old school guy. Listen to you talk about food is like watching Russell Crowe in The Beautiful Mind, man. It's like, do, 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 do. Nice. Right, I like that. I like that. Gary's like, don't give him any ammunition, man. Don't give him any ammunition. I literally didn't cook it. He cooked it. So. <laughs> hey, you taught me how. And to top all this off, some filet mignon tartare. Small dice filet mignon mixed with curried red chili paste, medium dice red onions, flash fried capers, uh, extra virgin olive oil, and nampla fish sauce. So then you just make sure that you mix all of those flavors thoroughly. It's weird to see raw beef get plated. This is a dish that was not popular at all. Sure. Highly questioned should it stay on the menu. <laughs> and now it has such a cultish following that if we took it off the menu, it would be a, it would be a, it would be a problem, yeah. I'll work my way to that. Let's start with the shrimp. You know, we're all about Texas flavors on the Texas bucket list, but every once in a while, you gotta steal the dish from our friends over to the east because sometimes they get it right. Definitely had a lot of shrimp dishes across the Lone Star State, but this one might be my favorite. I love it. On to the cooked steak. You literally feel like you should be in Vegas or New York or Chicago or wherever other fancy steak restaurants there are. But to find this in College Station, <laughs> that's amazing. And finally, it's time to take on that tartar. Hey, here's to trying new things in Texas. We never do bizarre, but I'll, I'll try anything once, I guess. It's not my cup of tea, man. Well, nothing like a little Texas sushi. I like my like meat rare, so I'm kind of, I'm a little bit scared, but I'm not paranoid about it. The flavor of the filet mignon tartare is terrific. And there isn't one component in there that doesn't do something. It's unreal because you get some caper, and then you get some onion, the beef, the Parmesan. That's just amazing. I, I refuse to even try it. And my, my friend said, you know what, I'm gonna mix it up, put a potato chip, try it one time. If you don't like it, spit out in a napkin otherwise, and you know what, it's fantastic. If you're looking for some of the finest flavors in the Brazos Valley for steak, wine, whiskey, shrimp, and even a little uh, filet mignon tartare, the Republic Steakhouse is well worth a stop. No, you know the rest. This is the best place in College Station to come to. Definitely worth the trip to come here and get the experience one time for sure, if not at least twice. Mm -hmm.